How am I able to train so hard despite cutting for months and being single digit body fat? Well, in this video, I'll share one tidbit that makes all the difference in instilling the confidence to push yourself to the limit. And that is, you need a safe training setup. Make it impossible to get hurt because that's why you fail to push yourself. You truly believe that an injury awaits or you don't trust the equipment or the exercise. Whether it's dangerous or not is irrelevant. You're like a grown elephant who can't pull the stick out of the ground. Whatever the reason, whether athlete X fear mongered you, whether you've been hurt in the past, whether you've seen gym fail compilations, whenever there is a mental blockade due to fear, that will 100% of the time compromise intensity. And it's the sole reason why you've never seen me really grind on a barbell bench press at the gym. Why? Because it's in a station that does not have safety pins. So if I'm in the preset incline or flat and I can't bring a bench or the power rack, do you honestly think I'm going to hit zero RIR? No. And that's actually a strategy to keep your ego in check. But what if you need that intensity? What if you're trying to get those straining reps in? Well, if you know there's a possibility of getting stuck, then the only logical solution is to leave more reps in the tank. Usually between two and three, but it could be one, which by the way is perfectly fine for hypertrophy. And there are some movements like good mornings where I almost never go to failure. Sometimes yes, but on average, I'll leave a couple reps in the tank. So we know that it minimizes fatigue and you just gotta increase your volume to get an equivalent stimulus. But still, what if you're trying to make your workouts efficient? You're short on time or you're running a high intensity phase. You're not trying to do all this volume. Well, you might stop yourself from doing that and get inferior results because you're afraid of getting pinned. And this applies to many motions that have a restrictive element, typically with a barbell. So if you have any self-doubt, then I might tell you to ditch a lot of barbell work or at least never go to failure, honestly. I certainly wouldn't. If I were going to a commercial gym and I did not have access to safety pins, where there'd be straps that are perfectly set, not that I have to suck up my ribs and roll down my body, get hurt that way or tear something. No, if I can't get the perfect safety setup, that me failing is not going to hurt me in any kind of way. If I can't guarantee that, then I'm not going to fail. So fix the equipment first or gravitate towards dumbbells if you like free weights. Because regardless, if you fail to complete the lockout, you're still going to have to bring those dumbbells back to the starting position, then on your knees. And no, you don't need to throw weights around either. Even if you've reached true momentary muscular failure, you can't even bend your arms a couple of inches. So emphasize dumbbells if what I mentioned earlier was a problem. This fixes it 100% of the time. And you not being able to grind is therefore a self-imposed limitation. You won't tear a peg even with high levels of fatigue it's very easy to get out of even the worst possible position. So if your sets don't look like mine, then it's not even a fear issue. You're just giving up. And if you can't do it on this, then I don't expect you to do it on any other compound, real talk. Or better yet, use machines. Because those always have a built-in safety mechanism. The range of motion is preset. For example, on a converging chest press machine, get the maximum way to stretch if you fail. Boom, it's just a couple inches back, you're done. You're not getting hurt. And it's maximally stable, you're locked in a particular movement pattern. So there's gonna be no misgrooves either. Same with the split machine. You get stuck in the bottom, you just flick those wrists, it gets locked in, you're good to go. Hey, keep it for calisthenics. Where do you think guys are most likely to push themselves on? Dips or push ups? You already know, it's push ups. Because if you fail, you land on the floor, and that's it. We've all failed thousands of times. And is it a coincidence that all the elite calisthenics athletes continue to live on push-ups from day one till now, years later, a decade plus? If you think you're going to tear a peck in the bottom of a weighted dip, if you think that the length of position is both a blessing and a curse because it's so stimulatory, yet it also puts you in the worst possible position, you don't push yourself. You're afraid of falling back on your squats? Set the straps such that when you're in the bottom position, the bar is almost skidding it. That's 
it. Common sense that you know what? I have to give complete credit to powerlifters for this one. They have understood that without a safe setup, you're going to end up like those injured guys that you see in competition where they got human spotters. Forget about humans. You need a better setup and you got to pick movements that naturally ensure maximum grindability. That's why these days I only train with the best equipment. I will set safety straps for most exercises in and out of the rack. I have two pairs just to say, even if the exercise has a low injury risk, you still want to double check your setup. Not only is it smart period, but it'll ensure that you're always pushing it to the limit. That's how simple this is. And on that note, I also wear the best fitness clothes, which brings me on to our sponsor, Barbell Apparel. Just want you to know that the best selling ultralight phantom tanks are now back in stock. So be sure to check them out before they're all gone. Like this is what I've been wearing this entire video and in most of the B-roll clips. It's so comfortable, you barely sweat. It defeats my former wife beater collection. So if you're looking to upgrade your tanks, you want premium quality, visit my link in the description box. You will not be disappointed. Now, one more thing I'll say about safety. When you do have this optimal environment, there will be times where you actually fail, fail. And that's okay. Because it takes failure to know failure. And once you've experienced it multiple times, you realize that everything's okay. You're not tearing pecs. You're not busting shoulders. Your kneecaps didn't explode. You didn't rip your discs out. Do you know how many times I've been saved by this home gym? I usually don't show those clips. Obviously, with time, it's happened less as I've dropped my ego. But I have failed hundreds of times. That's not even an exaggeration. Yet, I'm known to be one of the few guys in YouTube Fitness that's not injured. So now that you know this, is it a surprise that I'm not afraid to push my sets to the limit? Obviously, I want to complete the final repetition. There's no need to accumulate additional fatigue by literally getting stuck. But honestly, do you think I'm worried if the bar comes crashing down on the straps? No, I don't care. I know that nothing bad will happen to me because I've been in this situation so many times before. And that's what many of you lack. That's why it goes back to fear. It's a false fear. And that's why for me, it makes no difference whether I'm using machines or free weights with a secure setup. Those last reps are going to look almost identical, which I have proved over many years. There's so much variety in these clips. You see the straining. Hard work is hard work. Once you learn the skill of straining, it translates into all. I know I was annoying and emphasizing the importance of safety, but it starts with that. Once safety has been proven, an additional layer of high intensity is unlocked, which by the way, definitely applies to max effort training. I'm one of the few guys who've been maxing out consistently since the summer of 2014. And I failed, of course, not once have I been hurt. So if a 100% grind, the heaviest possible weight that you can lift for that movement pattern does not cause injuries, then what's the maximum work? It's nothing. You have been duped by steroid using frauds who have tendons of string beads. That's the reality. So what's actually causing you to get hurt is overuse, bad form, bad programming, and having muscular weaknesses that aren't addressed. You fix those factors and you quickly realize that intensity is not dangerous. So with that said, there's so much more I can share. In fact, I'm going to make a part two because I want this video to really be about the safety aspect. Didn't want you to skip over to the other segments. So we're going to cover this again. I'm going to get more into the practical programming side of things. But for now, I hope you learned a lot. Please check yourself before you wreck yourself. Let me know if you can relate to what I said regarding equipment, machines, free weights, all that. And I'll see you in the next video.